Wednesday's decision comes more than six months since Brianna was killed. Rob Harris looks back at that night and what has happened in the investigation since. March 13th, around 1240 in the morning, Louisville Metro Police entered Brianna Taylor's apartment. Officers had a no-knock search warrant, though they say they announced themselves. Officers then say they were shot at and they shot back. Taylor was shot multiple times and was killed. Her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, was charged with attempted murder for shooting at police. March 16th, her family speaks out for the first time. This is not a woman who would sacrifice her life and her family um, morals and values to sell drugs on the street. The family says Walker shot at officers in self-defense and that they were looking for someone who didn't live at Brianna's apartment. March 26th, Kenneth Walker was released from jail and put under house arrest. May 11th, the next big update comes. We learned Brianna Taylor's family had hired Benjamin Crump, a high profile civil rights attorney. This is when we started seeing Taylor's case get national attention. We also learned more about the shooting from Brianna Taylor's family. The news organization TMX shared this interview with us then. I could hear Kitty just like screaming and crying. They were shooting from outside the house like this was the wild, wild west. May 13th, the no-knock search warrant and affidavits in connection with Taylor's death were released. A couple things we learned from that. Taylor wasn't the main subject of the warrant. One of the main suspects had been charged the same morning Taylor was killed and police said they announced themselves and knocked at the apartment. Taylor's attorney said that witnesses could prove that wasn't true. LNPD's then Chief Conrad said the investigation was almost finished. May 21st, FBI Louisville announced they opened an investigation into Taylor's death. Chief Conrad also announced he would retire at the end of June. May 26th, a judge dismissed charges against Kenneth Walker. Commonwealth's attorney asked for it because he believed they needed to investigate more. May 28th, we finally get to hear Kenneth Walker's call to 911 from the night of Brianna's death. Help! Oh my God! Yes, help! I don't, I don't know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door and shot my girlfriend. That same night, protest started in downtown Louisville. They're blocked. Um, we hear loud pops, pops. Things got violent. Protests have continued every night since then. June 1st, another flashpoint. Restaurant owner David McAtee is shot and killed by a National Guardsman as law enforcement try to enforce curfew. Officials say McAtee shot first. We learned that two LMPD officers involved in the shooting didn't have their body cams on. And hours later, Mayor Greg Fisher fired Chief Steve Conrad. June 11th, Brianna's law is signed, banning no-knock warrants in Louisville. It was passed unanimously by Metro Council. On June 19th, LMPD and the mayor announced one of three officers in the case would be fired. According to his termination letter, Brett Hankison violated procedure when he fired 10 rounds into Taylor's apartment as they were executing a search warrant the night of her death. The FBI returned to Brianna Taylor's apartment that same day as part of their investigation. Five days later, on June 24th, Hankison appealed his firing. June 27th, gunshots in Jefferson Square. A man opens fire in the protests, shooting two people. One of them, Louisville photographer Tyler Gerth, died. Police cleared out Jefferson Square that next morning, banning overnight protests and removing tents and items with little warning. Gerth's father spoke to protesters later that day. My wife warned him not to come down because she, you know, yesterday in particular, because she thought it would be dangerous. But he said, no, I, I just need, I feel the need to go down and support, you know, the injustices and, and what's going on. And I want to document that. The suspect, 23-year-old Stephen Lopez, was arraigned in court on June 30th and charged with Gerth's death. Witnesses said Lopez was a regular at the park and had caused problems before. He reportedly had an argument with someone, not Gerth, on June 27th. When he returned to the square, police say video surveillance shows him grabbing a gun from another protester and then firing into the crowd. A look at Lopez's record reveals previous run-ins with police. As for Gerth's family, his sisters say they hope his legacy lives on through the photos he captured.
there have been a number of striking photos that he was able to capture that really touched the historical importance of what we're going through right now. And I think he wanted to be on the right side of history.